This morning I want to pray a blessing over your ears. <laughs> the Bible says those who have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And uh, I really feel this is a word that God has given me. I, I, I say this quite often, but man, I'm just in a, a rich season with the Lord. Um, and God is just feeding me manna straight from heaven, it seems like. And um, I want us to realize you're blessed this morning if you're, if you're here today. So often we forget to praise God that he woke you up this morning. We are a blessed people to be able to stand here today and... No M16 held to our head and that we're not in bondage and man that you've got the freedom to raise your hands and praise God and and so often we forget this. And so I, I just want to pray over you and over myself before I deliver this word because I really believe this is a now word. It's a word just for Elkhorn and if you're listening or whether you're a guest here today I believe this is a word that We'll go north, east, south, and west. And um, so if you're tired this morning, wake up. Um, it's time for the church to wake up. Guys, we've been preaching for a long time. I've known you since 1999. I've been affiliated with Elkhorn since 1999. That's when y'all hired me. And I really believe, I, I know this is not preaching right now, but I just want to let this get in your spirit. If we're going to go forward, now's the time. And so I want to pray over your ears that God would give you spiritual ears to hear what's going forward. Because the Bible says in Isaiah, Jeremy, that his word will go forward and it shall not return void. That means if you've got an ear, you can hear what God is speaking just to you. Don't worry about your neighbor right now. I want, you, I want to ask you a question. What is God speaking to you? To you. I know God's here because, boy, it's... We was eating supper last night. And I said, Jesus. And it was just like this. I mean, even the people next to us was quiet. The waiters and waitress stopped. Not no dish was clinging, no fork was clinging against the plate. It was just like this. See, a lot of people would call this, I mean, that's weird. But no, God is speaking right now. What is God telling you? So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray you, uh, God, whew. God, just release your sweet spirit. Oh, God, there's been such a good spirit in this house all morning. I love these precious people. I love what you're doing, dear God. But, Lord, I know you have more. I know, dear God, we've not seen it all. I know, dear God, that we're in the last hour. It's first and goal. And God, I just pray today, Lord, I know the alarm will sound one day, dear God. And Lord, I pray that, God, you find us working the fields, working the harvest. And God, I just praise you and thank you, dear God, for what you're doing right now. Lord, your spirit is so thick in here, God. And Lord, I pray today over everybody's ears. I know it may sound silly, but I really felt that's what you wanted me to pray for their ears. That God, that they would open their ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. So God, today, as we decrease, may you increase. God, may we feel you like never, ever before. God, may there be a mighty rushing wind. Hallelujah. Lord, I know you've had one Pentecost and two Pentecost. But God, I'm ready for the latter Pentecost. The latter rain, dear God, will be better than the beginning. That's what the Word says. And Lord, I really believe, God, that we're living in a good season, a good time, a good harvest. So God, today, I pray you would set Elkhorn Baptist Church on fire. Hallelujah. That Lord, we've received so much of your Spirit, dear God, that people would look at us in awe. That Father God, they want what we've got here, dear God. It's not about the music. It's not about the preaching. It's not about the chairs. It's not about the, the building program. It's all about the name of Jesus. 
So God, may that word, may that name never, ever, 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 ever get old. Ah, may we never forget about our salvation. Lord, set us on fire. May, you, may we be the spark to start the forest fire. And so God, today I pray over our ears. Give us ears to hear, hallelujah, what the Spirit of God is saying. Lord, we love you, we praise you, we thank you for being God. That's all we need. You're enough. Lord, if you've never done anything else for us, hallelujah, you saved our soul. Lord, we're going to heaven. That's enough. That's enough, Lord. But God, I know you've got a word today. So Lord, I pray you set me on fire. Lord, clothe my tongue with fire. Lord, run these aisles. Do what you've got to do, Holy Spirit. We submit to your authority, not religious authority. Not the rules of life, but the rules of the word. And Lord, faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. So Holy Spirit, preach today. Hallelujah. Preach, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name I pray and all God's beautiful people said. Let's give God a hand clap for what he's going to do. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated if you can. If you can't, stand. I want to continue part three on a series that I am the one. This is the place. And now's the time. I got a lot of you scared to death this morning. I can't tell you how many people says, Brian, why do you have a bed in the sanctuary? I'm just thankful I got a church that will accept a bed. <laughs> in the sanctuary. If I had a title this morning, a subtitle, to go along with I am the one, this is the place, and now's the time, it would be called The Last Giant. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, There's one, you're one giant away from the promised land. That's deep. I'm going I'm to preach a deep, good word today. Never, never, I've read the Bible through like two times, and I've... I've you know how it is when you read the Bible, you get a little, I guess, tired and you just start skipping over words and this, that, and the other. So I've, I've never paid attention to this scripture. I'm, I'm going to uh, be preaching to you today. But uh, you're one giant away from the promise. You're one giant away from the promise. Deuteronomy chapter 3 is where we're going to go. Deuteronomy chapter 3, I'm going to read some scripture. We're going to preach for a few minutes and people's going to make some changes. Life's going to be saved and... We're going to see the Holy Ghost show up like he always does. How many of you know God loves you? Man, listen to me. God loves you guys. He loves you. And God's got a plan for you. If you're here today and you're alive, do something. Do something for the Lord. Time's running out. How many of you know time's running out? Do something. We got to do something. You say, well, Brian, what if he don't come back in 100 years? My children and my grandchildren will be blessed. I'm just not living for me. I'm living for the next generation too. And so I want that. I want this to get into your spirit this morning. And uh, so Deuteronomy chapter three, we're going to start in verse four. We're going to start in verse four. Some very unique scripture. I want this, Lord Jesus, please God, let it get in their spirit. <laughs> Good stuff. Come back tonight because I'm going to finish this tonight. Okay, I'm not going to wear y'all out with a two-hour sermon today, but uh, I might. No, I won't. I respect y'all. But if the Holy Ghost shows up, you won't want to leave. So in verse 4, Deuteronomy chapter 3, very unique scripture. It says, at that time, now is the time. <laughs> at that time, because it was the right time. It says, we took all his cities. Notice it says his cities. Watch this. There was not one of the 60 cities, not one of the 60 cities that we did not take from them. The whole region of Agrob, Og's kingdom of Bashan. And I know these are some big words again, but we're going to get to it. Verse 5. All these cities were fortified. Look, they were, they were fortified with high walls and with gates and bars. And there were also a great many unwalled villages. Verse 6, we completely destroyed them. They completely, they, they devastated them. They destroyed them. 
They completely destroyed them as we had done with Shahan and the king of Hespan, destroying every city, men, women, children. But listen to this. But all the livestock and the, the plunder from the cities we carried off for ourselves. They didn't kill everything. They took their livestock. Verse 8. So at that time we took from these two kings of the Amorites the territory east of Jordan of Aaron. Remember we talked about that last week. I'm building off this sermon. Jordan, the Mount Himron. And listen to this, verse 10. Skip down to verse 10. We took, we took all of the towns on the plateau and all Gilead and, and all Bashan and the Sakhar area, towns of Og, kingdom in Bashan. Now here's the verse I want you to get. You say, Brian, I don't understand this. This is the verse. Remember, they destroyed them all. But watch this, verse 11. Only Og. Everybody say, only Og. Only Og. King of Bashan was left. He was the only one that was left. They destroyed everything, stole their livestock. But King Og was the only one that was left. And the remnant of the Riphites. Watch this. Watch this. And this is what really got me, what really stuck in my spirit. His bed, this is crazy scripture. This is, this is King Og. He was a giant. Come from the tribe of Anak. That's where Goliath come from. The, he was the only one that they did not kill was Og. Now watch this. Og, his bed was made of iron. And was more than, it was more than 13 feet long and 6 feet wide. I'm going to stop there. His bed was a king-size bed. So if you've got a king-size bed, if you've got scripture now to back up, you can have a king-size bed. Amen? But I'm going to show you something. I'm going to teach just for a moment, then I'll get into preaching mode, okay? But I've got, got to set this foundation. With me, say, i got you, preacher. So we got a king. His name is Og from, from Bashan, from the tribe of Anak. And that's where Goliath come from. I've got to set this foundation. And the only thing they talked about was his bed. Now think about this. This was crazy, but the only thing they talked about was his bed. He had a king-sized bed. It was approximately, a lot of the theologians and a lot of the commentaries said his bed was 14 foot long and 7 foot wide. 14 foot long, 7 foot wide. But here's the deal. The children of Israel were in the wilderness for how many years? 40. They just got out of the wilderness. Now, Glenn, I want you to think about this. While they were in the wilderness, they did not get hungry. God says, I fed them manna from heaven every single day. Now, I don't know about you, but that would be a faith test. You didn't have no food until God brought it to you. Wow. God said these words also while the children were in, were, uh, in bondage in the, in, in the wilderness. He said, their clothes never wore out. He said the shoes that were on their feet for 40 years never wore out. He said when, when, it, was, when it was cold, I, I had a fire by night. When it was hot during the day, he said I have a cloud by day. And what God really spoke into my heart was to tell this church, and if you're listening by radio, God has given us everything we need to make it to our promise. Listen to me. God has given you everything you need. Everything. Elkhorn, God has given us everything we need to get to our promise. Everything, everything. Now the children of Israel are out of the wilderness and they're standing, and watch this. Now they're out of the wilderness, and here they are. They're standing at the promised land that is flowing with milk and honey, the land that is more than enough, but there's a problem. Y'all ready for this? There's one giant. There's a giant standing when they just got out of the problem, just got out of the wilderness. There was a giant. His name was Og. He had a big bed, <laughs> 14 foot long, 7 foot wide. And the children of Israel, I can just see them now, Bobby. They get out of the wilderness. They're standing here. They can see the promised land. But the problem is there's a giant named Og. And that giant had a big bed. And the problem was, before they could get to the promise, they had to go through a problem. They had to go through a problem. Everything that the children of Israel lived for, longed for, 
prayed about, dreamed about, and planned for was one giant away. Listen to me. Everything you're dreaming about right now and thinking about and planning for and praying for, I'm telling you today under the unction of the Holy Ghost, you're one giant away from your promise. You're one giant away from your promise. And so many people, so many Christians are doing this. They'll come up. They'll have a problem. They'll see it. It's here. They can see the promises of God, but they'll back away because of the giant named Og. So today, I want to I preach a word to you, the last giant. You see, you're closer to your promise than you think. What if I told you your promise was just seven feet away from you? What if I told you your dreams, your plans, your prayers, everything you've been praying for and on fire for you, now you're out of the wilderness and you're standing seven feet away. Think about this. Seven feet away from the promise. So many churches, Judy, get right to the threshold of the promise. And they'll back away because of a king-size bed. Of a king-size bed. What if I told you this morning, a seven-foot king-size bed is the only thing keeping you away from your promise? Wow. It was interesting to me that the only thing that the Bible highlighted at this time was a bed. He didn't talk about his weapons. He didn't talk about his sword. He didn't talk about his shield. Y'all stay with me, please. I know I'm teaching, but I I know y'all like preaching. We're going to get there in just a moment. But hang with this preacher, okay? Because it's a good word. The only thing the Bible highlighted was was the bed of Og. The bed. And I'm going to show you something this morning. I've done a, a Hebrew study of this word bed. And this word bed, the only thing standing between you and your promise, you're not in the wilderness no more, you're not in bondage no more, you're out and you're sitting there going, hallelujah, I feel free. But you've not made it to your promise yet because there's a king-size bed that's separating your problem from your promise, your problem from your promise, your problem from your promise. God highlighted the bed. And I've done a, a Hebrew study of this. The bed represents, and if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down because this is a word. Y'all listen to me, Elkhorn. This is a word for Elkhorn Baptist Church. And if you're listening under my teaching today, it's a word for you. This bed, according to the Hebrew, represents the spirit of take it easy. Y'all going to get this word today. I prayed over your ears. You're going to get it. Just get comfortable. Woo! Yeah, just sit back and take it easy and relax. Don't get too on hot for too on fire for God. Don't get too passionate for God. Don't 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 get on fire for God. Now you can have a little smoke rising off from your ears, but don't get red faced. You know what I'm saying? Don't get on fire for the Lord. Just sit there and you're out of the wilderness. You're not in bondage no more. You're not in captivity no more. But you're not in your promised land no more. So what this word means, just go to church, put your time in, and God bless you, and hopefully I'll see you in heaven. So what this word means, the word bed, according to the Hebrew, means just sit back. (laughs) Just sit back. I thought about the children of Israel. They, here they are. They're out of the wilderness now, Tim. And they're free. And they're not in chains. They're not in bondage. And, you know, God, they depended upon God. And God got them out of there. See, a lot of you, a lot of you, listen to me. You're not in, you're not in the wilderness no more. But you're not in the promised land either. And what God spoke into my spirit was this. Israel could have said, Whoo, praise God. At least I'm not in bondage. At least the chains are gone. At least I don't have to go back to that. And here's what I wrote in my notes. I wanted to give this to you. Boy, it will preach the woods on fire. Most people are just fine sitting on the outskirts of the wilderness and looking at the promises. Most people, most churches, most Christians are just fine sitting on the outskirts. They're not in bondage no more. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not in captivity no more. The chains have been broken. And you, most Christians, most churches are okay. 
They're okay just sitting on the outskirts and looking back and say, Woo! Praise God. At least they're not in the wilderness, but God wants to get you into his promises. God wants, he, he wants to get you into his promises, Glenn. He don't want you just to be out of the wilderness and looking back and saying, my God, at least I'm not there. Most churches have the, the, most churches have the just sit back disease. They just want to sit back. And yes, I'm wired different, and, but you know what? I don't, I'm not taking that excuse no more. Because when you've got the Holy Ghost in you, it's the Holy Ghost doing the work, and you're not doing the work. When you're on fire for God, and people look at me all the time and say, well, I wish I could do that. I wish I... You can do that. Quit making an excuse to be on the outskirts of the wilderness looking at your promises and being satisfied where you're at. Boy, it's a preach, Greg. So I started thinking, that's dangerous. I started thinking. I started thinking about football. I thought about coach when I... When I Thought about this. You know the toughest yards to gain is when you're at the end zone? Whew. When you're in the end zone, you can see the field goal. You can see you're yards away from scoring a touchdown. Hallelujah. We're yards away. When I really believe this with all that I am this morning, the rapture could take place today. How many of y'all agree with that? It could. Lord, come. Hallelujah. Just come. But here's the thing. I believe El Corner is first and go. I believe we're at the end zone. Hallelujah. Here we are. We've got King Jesus on the sidelines calling the plays. He's the head coach. And here's what I just thought about. The toughest yards to gain is the ones when you're the closest to the touchdown. See, here's what, what I thought about, too. I thought about, I said, man, I said, if we're first and go, Satan's going to put his best giants in. Not the New York Giants, but he's going to put the, the Giants in. See, Satan, Satan is uh, he's trying to stop what God is doing. We know that. But I'm sitting to telling you today, the toughest yards we will gain as a church is when we get closer to the touchdown. I really believe you as an individual, you as a mom, you as a dad, the toughest yards you will gain is when your children are living like heathens. That's when Satan's going to put the, the biggest giants in the game. He don't, want you, he don't want your children to come home. But I'm sitting and telling you today, when it's first and goal, and you can see the touchdown line, you can see the end zone, it's not time to back off. Right. Romans chapter 13, verse 11 says these words, Wake up, you slumber. Wake up, you old slumber, Romans 13, 11. Wake up, you old sleepy person. Watch what he says. Because your salvation is nearer now than when you first believed. Listen to me. Wake up. Wake up, you old slumber. And if I really got down, he would say this. Wake up, you old lazy person. Uh-oh. Y'all ain't got no rocks in your pocket or nothing, do you? He said, wake up out of your sleep. It's not time to back off. It's not time to get away from it. You're first and go. The alarm's going to sound. It's time to score a touchdown in the name of Jesus Christ. You better praise him while you can. I'm telling you the truth this morning. See, that spirit will say, don't desire more. <laughs> don't desire more. Sheila, don't, you don't need no more. You've got enough to get you there. Don't desire no more of the Holy Ghost. Don't desire no more of the worship. Don't desire coming to church more. That spirit will say, just sit there. That spirit will say, just sit back. Get comfortable. Don't do nothing with what you got. In Romans and all through the Bible, he says, wake up, you slumber, you lazy, sleepy person. Huh. See, the greatest threat to Israel was not a giant. Y'all listen to me, please. I see some of you going to sleep. Shame on you. I call you out. I, I'm through playing church. Wake up. How in the world can you go to sleep in a Holy Ghost Spirit-filled church? Go to bed early if you can't. If you can't. <laughs> Hallelujah, I better be good. 
My God. I just don't want to come out of the wilderness and get to my promise and seven feet standing in front of me. And I have to stand before the Lord one day and God says, Brian, the only thing standing between you and your promise was seven feet. Was seven feet was a king-sized bed. So many people, they, they're getting comfortable and they're getting lazy and they're, they're, not, they're relaxing and they're going to sleep. They're really going to sleep. The devil would love for Elkhorn Baptist Church to say these words, we've done enough. The devil would love for Elkhorn Baptist Church. Now, you've got a pastor that loves God more than he loves his wife. You've got a pastor in front of you that believes in all the Bible. You've got a pastor in front of you that believes in the Holy Ghost. You've got a pastor in front of you that says, if God don't do it, nobody can. Hallelujah. You've got a pastor that's on fire for God. And you need to get on fire. While you can burn, burn. Hallelujah. Oh, set me on fire, hallelujah. Preach it, preach it. My God. Oh, the, the old devil would love Elkhorn Baptist Church say, Well, Brian, my goodness, my God, we've seen 500 salvations. Aren't you satisfied? No. Brian, my goodness, I'm tired on Wednesday night. You are a king-size bed Christian. Just think about that. Lord, use me. Use me, God. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> One deer. Oh, sheep. <laughs> Two sheep. <laughs> I went deer hunting. Hallelujah. <laughs> Think about this, man. We're, we're living in a generation. I want to get you fired up this morning. If we're living in the last days, and first and go. And we're not in bondage. We're not in the wilderness. Why in the world would Elkhorn come to the bed and say, I can see the promises. I know they're there. I heard Brother Brian preach about it. But... <sighs> Whoo. Preach that, Blake. That's good, isn't it? Whoo. You've dreamed enough. You, we, we, well, my goodness, we got five vans. How many more you want? Ten. 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 Brian, my God, how, how much you want from me? All I can get. All I can get. All I can get. All I can get. I promise you one day. You may not think me here. You, I may get under your skin on earth. But one day, when you bow down to King Jesus, you'll look up and say, Whoa, I wish I'd have done more. I wish I'd have prayed more. I wish I'd have preached louder. I wish I'd have been filled with the Holy Ghost. I wish I could have done more for God. You better live while you're living. Hallelujah. Woo, preach that, white boy. Ah, I'll preach myself happy. Some of you are allowing seven feet. Seven feet to keep you from your promise. I want a better life. <sighs> Here's Sunday morning. Y'all ready? Should I go to church or not? Eh, 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 eh. Hit the alarm clock. I had a mom come in here one day and tell me, my, my daughter's wearing me out. I said, what's going on? She said, she comes and wakes me up every Sunday morning. Isn't that good? We got kids on fire for the Lord. I prayed for y'all. I'm glad before the music even starts, they're sitting there going, come on, let's get it on. Come on, let's preach it, boy. I'm glad we got youth that's on fire for God and not backing down from the devil. I'm glad that you guys, you don't have to go through the religious stuff that I went through to get to my promises. Hallelujah. Don't you ever lose your zeal. Don't you ever lose your fire for the Lord. You need to praise Him. Why do you got a chance to praise Him? You don't come to the bed and say, oh, I don't know. I'm telling you, thus saith the Lord. Wake up, oh slumber. Wake up, oh sleepy person. It's time to praise the Lord. Woo!
my God. Oh, I feel the Lord. Hallelujah. Some of you are letting a king-size bed. You think it's made to sleep in. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You think it was made to sleep in. I put my time in. I've done what God's called me to do. No, none of us, including this preacher, I could do more. Huh? Y'all like this type of preaching? Ten of y'all take ten. I, 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 Brian, you don't know how far I live from the church. Well, you may, if you can't be faithful to Elkhorn, you may want to find a church two miles from your house. Oops. It's, it's great. It's just the way it is. We don't have time to sit back and sleep. We don't have time to say, well, I just don't know what I'm going to listen to. Me. Everybody under my voice today should be in some kind of ministry in this church. Something, something, something. If it's writing cards, if it's making phone calls, if it's serving food on Wednesday nights, if it's driving a van, if it's teaching a class, you need to be in ministry and God's counting on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know y'all don't like it. Well, Brian, I'm ready for my king-size bed. I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for somebody to call me. How's that working for you? Why does a preacher or somebody in the ministry have to call Christians to work in God's house? Let me go back up here. <laughs> Are y'all okay? It's the truth. We don't need people sitting back and being judges. This is not American Idol. <laughs> Wake up. Ding, ding. It's on like Donkey Kong. What do y'all want me to say? I'm being honest with you. Wake up, oh slumber. Wake up, get out of your king-size bed, and go from the wilderness to the promised land. Some of you are allowing seven feet to stop you from your blessing. Woo. So how do we go from the bed to the promise? How many of y'all remember Goldilocks and the three bears? Y'all remember that? Sheila said, who's that? You know that story. Y'all remember Goldilocks and three bears? Three bears got ready, and they, before they left, Mama Bear made some soup. Y'all remember that? Well, porridge, yeah. That's, what is porridge then? It's soup. I'm from Kentucky. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we're going to say soup. Mama Bear made some soup. I don't know if it's vegetable soup. ABC, one, two, three. I don't really care. It's soup. Listen to this. Deer soup. <laughs> so check this out. So all the little bears made some soup. Mama did. And she said, they said, let's go for a walk. So all three little bears left the house. And Goldilocks came into the house. Y'all remember that? This makes sense here in just a minute. And she came into the house. So how do we get rid of this, of this seven-foot giant? How in the world do we cross over from, set from the wilderness to the promised land? We got too many Goldilocks Christians. We got too many Goldilocks Christians. This Goldilocks came into the house and... She, she sat down, and she went to Papa Bear Soup. Ooh, that's too hot. Then she went to Mama Bear Soup. And she, she took a sip of that, and she said, Ooh, that's too cold. Then she went to Baby Bear. And <laughs> Baby Bear... Baby bear soup, she took a sip of that, and she said, Ooh, that's just right. That's Luke. We got too many Goldilocks Christians. They'll go to a church that's on fire, feel with the Lord, feel with His presence. Ooh, that's too hot. That's too uncomfortable. Then they'll go to the frozen chosen, First Baptist of Frigidaire.
that's, I, I can't do like Brother George. He did a Holy Ghost dance or something like that. I'm just doing a white man's dance. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's too cold. They're too laid back. They don't have a youth group. They don't have a children's program. That's too cold. And all of a sudden, they'll go to a church service, have two or three songs. Just don't sing. Just sing it one time, though, Greg. Sing the first stanza only. Now, if you repeat yourself, that's unholy. Even though God told them to spring up old well, that's all they said. And even in Isaiah chapter 6, all he says, holy, holy, holy. Even when we get to heaven, the universal song is going to be holy, holy, holy. But we can't sing it no more than one time through. Oh, I'm preaching. Oh, I'm so preaching today. And all of a sudden, they go there and they'll sing two songs and the preacher will get up and, blessed be the name of God. If you have your Bibles, turn to Psalms 23. We're going to read two verses. We're going to have a, a study uh, of uh, the first two verses. <laughs> and man, they'll have three points and a benediction. Nobody will get saved. Nobody will get born again. But they'll go, ooh, I like it. It's Luke. I don't know about you, but I want a Holy Ghost spirit filled, tore up from the floor up, hot, on fire, smoking. I want the Holy Ghost in my life. I want a church that'll step on my toes, make me right, and get it tight in the name of Jesus Christ. I want a pastor filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't want a laid back, mediocrity church. I want a spirit filled church. Yeah! Yeah! Hallelujah! Yes, hallelujah! Woo! Yeah, I want a church, not just to get to seven feet away and say, Woo! I know Brother Brian's right. I know I can see it. I know. Oh, no. Oh, hold on. Oh, oh I'll drop my bear. Thank you, Coach. Uh, Y'all too loud. I'm trying to go to sleep. Lord, I know you want to use God. When I get up, I promise you, I will make that visit. 1,001 sheep. 1,002. We're going to have deer and sheep tonight. And see, here's the thing. They, I'm being honest with you. I, I don't know what that is, but anyway. So many people are, are in a king-size bed. I worried y'all because you said, who else is going to be in that bed? I promise you, the only woman that's going to be in this bed is my wife, Dana Michelle Rafferty. That's it. I don't want nobody else. So here's the deal. Some of you right now are seven feet away from your promise. Here you are. You're comfortable. You're laying back. You're in bed. You're sleeping in. Oh, you hurt my feelings. You ain't heard nothing yet. It's the truth. Isn't it sad, Bobby? This is weird. I'm in bed talking to you. It's just really weird, but <laughs> it's really weird. But Bobby, did you ever really think that we would have to beg people to come to church? To put their time in? Did you ever really think that, man, that you'd have to say, church, wake up, people are dying and going to hell? Elkhorn, I'm telling you today, under the unction of God, wake up. We got too many Goldilocks Christians. Ooh, that's too hot. The lights are burning my head. The praise team's too loud. They're too energetic. They're too excited. 
they, they just go too long. They sing the song repetitively 15 times. I don't understand. I don't know. Li- I don't like them. I just don't know why. Well, y'all are pointing at people. Quit doing that. <laughs> y'all are making me nervous. <laughs> and then, if you go to a cold church, well, they just don't do enough. I just don't understand them. The preacher, he just, I don't know, he's just weird. I'm weird. I never thought I'd be in bed preaching on a Sunday morning. (laughs) This is crazy. Unreal. Go to Ox Christians. I'm talking about, man, if you got to go around, go under, go over, whatever you got to do, get to the promises of God. Hey, watch this. Ashley, that's a comfortable bed. That's Ashley's bed. See, <laughs> comfortable. That's, that, that's dangerous. This is a dangerous position to be in right here. I'd much rather be loud and obnoxious, on fire with the zeal of the Lord, and making a heavenly difference than be laying in a king-size bed and not doing nothing for the Lord but bickering and fussing and fighting and confusion and all this other stuff. It's no good. That's a king-size bed, Christian. Whew. It's a king-size bed. Isn't it amazing? Children of Israel got out of the wilderness, Brother Bob. Got seven feet away from their promise. And all of a sudden, they had to make a decision. They had to make a decision. See, this giant would tell Elkhorn, sit back. You've got enough programs. Sit back. Don't buy no more chairs. Sit back. Don't have a visitation program. That's just crazy. That worked in the 1980s, but it won't work today. The, the enemy would sit there and say, man, y'all are doing good. You've had 500 salvations. You're almost out of debt. You don't have to do anything else. Brian, y'all are doing more than most churches are. And that's how crazy people think. I'm doing enough. I come to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. What you think? worried about your Sundays. I'm worried about your Mondays. What you're doing with it once you leave the house of God. Goldilocks Christians. Too hot, too cold, lukewarm. And only you can answer this question. Youth, where y'all at? I want y'all to get on fire. I don't care what they say about you. Don't be a man or a woman pleaser or a church pleaser. You seek the Lord while he can be found. And I get, watch this, I get in trouble. I get phone calls for preaching like this. I'm going to save you some money on your phone bill. Don't call me. Because watch this, I am not backing down. I am not backing down. I am not backing down. I be daggone, double dog dare on. I am not Gonna let seven feet, a king size bed, rob me of what God wants to give me. I'm not doing it. Hey, y'all know what we need? We need some Jacob people in here. Y'all remember what Jacob did? He wrestled with the Lord all night. And he hung on. His hip got thrown out of place, but he hung on. He said, God, I'm not gonna let go, hallelujah, until you bless me. Hey! I, I'm not, listen, I'm not going to lay in bed. Lord, bless me, bless me, oh Lord, bless me indeed, oh God. Enlarge my territory, Lord, keep your hand upon me. And Lord, I promise I won't do no evil. You need to keep rolling. I made it. I made it. But watch this. There's a problem before you get to the promise. It's called a king-size bed. It's called the spirit of just do enough. Just sit back, do what you want to do, just as long as you get one salvation a year. It blows my stinking mind. 
Southern Baptists think getting one salvation a year is doing more than everybody else is doing. Shame on the convention. I'll get a call this week from Dr. So-and-so, but that's okay. Daggone it. That's right. We as God's church have to get from the, from the problem to the promise. And watch this. This works in your marriage. This works at home. This works. At, you know what, what the most counseling that I get throughout the week? My husband won't do nothing with me no more. He's a king-sized husband. And I'm not talking like this. He's a king-sized husband. I remember when I met Dana. Whew. I remember. Close your ears just for a minute, Walker. I remember. I remember God putting her in my path. I remember what I would do just to have a date with her. I remember I couldn't get her off my mind. That's when y'all are supposed to go, oh. Thank y'all. Good gracious. Man, she worked in Eat Town and I worked in Camelsville. And every morning I got up, there was a note found in my truck where she would stop by every night and write me a love letter. Well, how come you do that for her but not me? I don't understand y'all. I started thinking. And I miss that. I miss that. You know why your, your marriage will stop being on fire? You get lazy. You stop feeling that fire. You stop feeling that zeal. Complacent and still and comfortable in your marriage. And I remember what my mama told me. Oh, what would I give to go on another date with your daddy? Come on now. Isn't it sad we got to wait for something to die before we realize how blessed we are? We are. What I'm telling you, Elkhorn Baptist Church, I stopped by this morning to tell you, we are a blessed people. We are so blessed in this house. And today there's a bed in front of you. It's not a king size, it's a queen size. But there's a bed standing between your problem and your promise. And it's not time to go to sleep. It's not time to get comfortable. It's not time to get lazy and laid back. It's time to build the kingdom of God. So my question is, praise team, you guys come. My question is this. You are the one... This is the place, and now's the time. You're the one. This is the place, and now is the time. From the youth all the way back and to the back. I'm declaring today that there's seven feet. Seven feet standing between you and your promise. Seven feet standing between you and your promise, you and your miracle, you and your calling, you and your anointing, you and doing whatever God's called you to do. Seven feet, Miss Laura. Seven feet. Think about this. Hey, hey, we'll come here just for a moment. I want you to stand right there. There's a gap between me and Haywood. How can I get to you? You have to knock me down. How can, how can you help me get there? That's it. Cool. Help me. Help your friend. Don't give up on people. Help them get to the promises of God. Help that child. Help that church. Help that individual get across that problem over to the promise. You may have to reach out. 
You may have to grab a phone and say, hey, I'm thinking about you. You may have to write a letter. I don't know what you're going to have to do. But I'm sitting telling you what God laid on my heart. And, and you may not get this, but I hope you do, because I prayed over your ears. A king-sized bed, seven foot wide, seven feet is standing from the problem to the promise. From the praise team all the way back. Guys, welcome to church. This is not a Goldilocks church. This is a high impact energy church. We don't leave nothing out. We believe all the Bible, everything in it, from tongues to Peter walking on water. Every, we believe everything in the Bible. We leave nothing, nothing, nothing out. So it's up to you today. Some of you have seven feet keeping you from your promise. So what are you going to do about it? Did y'all get the word today? All right. Some of you lost your zeal, your, your fire, your passion. You're not hot, you're not cold. You've been eating baby bear soup for too long. It's time to cross over. You say, Brian, I don't understand. Watch this. I don't either. I don't either. I just trust the Lord. One day I'll understand because He'll teach me. I love it. Look here. <laughs> Just dancing. That's my kind of kid right there. Seven feet. Seven feet, seven feet, seven feet, seven feet. Miss Lord, what if I told you there were seven feet? All you got is seven feet keeping you from your promise. Seven feet. I'd be working to get there. Miss Lord, I'm, my mama told me never to do this, but I'm going to do it. How old are you? 74. You're 74, and every Wednesday, I see you. Most people think at the age of 74, it's time to retire. That ain't what you said. You told me before, you said, I love my church, and I'm willing to serve. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get there. And you have, and thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being faithful in this house. I appreciate you, and I love you for that. Everybody here today, I'm challenging you. Where, where's your calling? If you're laying in a king-sized bed, <laughs> well, I'm coming to church. The devil comes to church. Well, Brian, I do Bible study at my home. Your home is not the church. I have people call me all the time and say, well, I'm starting the church. Watch this. Let me help you all really quick. You got to have a mother church before you can start a church. We got a lot of churches in this community that's not a church. Oops. It's the truth. The church of Jerusalem was the mother church of Thessalonica, Corinth, and Ephesus, and all through the Bible. You can't get mad and build a church. You can't do that. I'm sorry it takes a Sunday morning to speak truth into a body. But I'm telling you today, under the unction of God, some of you have a seven foot, a king size bed Christian. And one day, your heart will stop. How many know you're going to die? If your hand's not up, you're probably dead right now. <laughs> You're going to die one day, Margot. She's ready. You're, so you're born again, saved, been baptized. You're going to heaven. What about you, Stuart? Saved, born again, been baptized, and on your way to heaven. Amen? Good deal. That's what it's about. We got too many king size churches. And I'm telling you today, you got seven feet standing between your promise and your problem. And, Jim, it's time. To roll and go. <laughs> Time to roll and go. You say, well, I'm 74. Tell Miss Lure that. Yeah, tell Miss Lure. Miss Lure, I appreciate you, but you don't need to work no more. 
What would you say? I'm going to be there anyway, aren't you? Praise God. Keep rolling and going. Praise God. We're hit and go church. We hit them with the gospel. <laughs> and we put them in the church. So here's the deal. If you're lost, you need to get saved. If you're not a member, you need to join church. If you've not been baptized, you need to get baptized. Make it right before you go. Keep rolling, Elkhorn. Row, 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 row. Row, row, row. Tap, tap, tap. Row, row, row. Go, go, go. That's our vision for next year. Tap, row, and go. So stand to your feet. Father God, in Jesus' name. Lord, today I, there are some decisions that need to be made. Some decisions need to be made, God. There are some marriages that are seven foot apart. There are some homes that are seven foot apart. They're in the middle. They're not in the wilderness, but they got a problem. So, God, today, I plead the blood of God that, Lord, today this altar will be filled. And, God, we'd roll to our promised land. Be glorified, dear God, in Jesus' name. And all God's people said.